Okay. I'm here for. Hi everybody. Thank you all for being punctual. You guys are, you guys get A pluses already. Mm -hmm. The class hasn't even started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We'll give everyone else uh, who's getting a B in this class another minute and uh, get started. If you don't mind, just uh, keep you guys keep yourselves on mute until we get to the Q and A at the very end. Uh, we will save you know five ten minutes at the very end for question and answers. So, but in the meantime, we'd appreciate if you guys um, stay on mute while we do the presentation. I promised them fifteen minutes of Q and A. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing these familiar, familiar names and faces. Right. This is the advantage of not having the webinar format is that you do get to see everyone. Exactly. This is fun. By the way, you guys are so great. I, I, we, we really appreciate the time that we get to spend with you guys on the phone or on Zoom. Um, you guys have been so great with um, testing it and going through the onboarding. And, and every time you send a question, we, I mean, believe it or not, we love questions. It means that you guys are using it and testing it and, and being interested. So we are so grateful when you guys send in questions. So keep doing that. Um, well, let's let's get started. I'll, we'll start with uh, quick intros. Um, my name is Ji Haley. I'm the the co-founder CEO of Sportsbox AI. We got some other team members in the room. Stephanie Way, our head of marketing. Um, Sam Meneker, who is our CTO, Chief Technology Officer. Phil Cheatham, who is our Chief Scientist um, and Biomechanist. And Ryan Crawley, who is our director of sales, who many of you, many of you guys have met over the last couple of weeks. Um, he is the newest member of our team. And uh, Sean, uh, Sean Hogan and David Ledbetter are also in the room. Um, David Ledbetter obviously doesn't really need an introduction, um, a legend in, in the world of golf instruction. Sean Hogan is the director of instruction at Champions Gate uh, Ledbetter Golf Academy. And uh, he's been working with David for a long, long time. So um, we've got some real experts in the room. They've, um, you know, I'm not including myself here, uh, Phil, Sean, and David, they've seen uh, 3D data, uh, tons and tons of it, and um, have used it in action with real students um, of all, all abilities and all skill levels, um, especially with the elite pros. So um, they have Lots of insights to share, which uh, we are excited about and hope that this will be interesting and useful information for you. And we're planning on doing um, one of these webinars every month. Um, so, and, and, and the focus isn't going to be just, you know, here's a bunch of interesting data, but we're, we're really, every time we have a discussion about what kind of content we want to put out, we go back to, okay, how does an instructor, how does a coach make use of this. So we always want to um, provide information that will make this practical and pragmatic for you, how to make sports box and 3D data useful in real life in making a difference in your students' swings. And, um, and along those lines, if you guys have ideas or questions to make this content more useful for you, please send them our way. Um, but with that, we will get started with Phil who will go through um, some really, really interesting information uh, that he's, he's been able to analyze over the years using uh, 3D information. Um, he's gathered some insights about, you know, what, what the pros do, you know, what 100% or 90% of professionals who have been measured in 3D do that, that that's not as often found in uh, regular amateur swing. So I thought that would be a really great way for us to get started. So. Phil, take it away. Yeah, all right, I'll share my screen. Do you see the presentation at this point? Yep, by the way, if you guys want to um, just drop your questions in the chat, we'll monitor that and uh, we'll, we'll roll through those, through those at the end. Yeah, okay, so let's get started. So the webinar, what you need to know how to teach with 3D. So, um, hang on, why is it not advancing? 
There we go. Um, obviously, we've done the welcome. So I'm going to talk about three things every pro does when measured in 3D. Um, but before that, uh, I'll start with some definitions because I always like to have a practical background uh, to what I'm talking about so that you can apply the theory to the practical side of it. And when I'm done, David and Sean will speak about most frequently taught uh, lessons, what they teach in the most uh, with 3D and the most frequently taught lesson. Sorry about that, messing it up. Um, okay, let's get going. So first definition, uh, biomechanics. This is really what Sports Fox 3D Golf does. We analyze biomechanics, the biomechanics of your swing. And biomechanics is the study of human motion using the principles of geometry, physics, engineering, and of course, anatomy and physiology. In sports, we use biomechanics to provide a rationale for why we teach specific techniques. So two of the main goals of biomechanics are to rapidly improve performance and also to help in reduce injury risk. Um, also, biomechanics can help with equipment design. But we'll probably be talking about the improving performance side of it tonight. So a subdiscipline of biomechanics, two subdisciplines are kinematics and kinetics. Um, I want to talk about these because we at Sportsbox in 3D Golf, we do kinematics. Um, we don't touch on kinetics yet, but that may be something in the future. Um, kinet kinematics is motion. It's the motion of the objects. It's what you see. It's the motion of the objects without concern to the forces that are producing the motion. Whereas kinetics is actually the forces and it's the forces that are producing the motion. It's the interaction of those forces throughout your entire body, including internal and external forces. So you could think of it from the point of view that kinematics is really the look um, of the motion. It's the look of your golf swing. It's the look of the flight of the ball. So you can see the picture on the left showing the uh, trajectory of the golf ball. That would be considered uh, kinematics. Kinetics is the feel because you can think of a force hitting you. It's going to feel, you're going to feel it. It's going to hurt. Like if you're that golf ball on the bottom left there, you're feeling that impact uh, by the golf club. If you're uh, the quarterback in a football game, like in the small diagram on the bottom there, you're feeling the force. So the kinematics, sorry, the kinetics is the force hitting you, whereas the kinematics would be the trajectory he takes when he falls to the ground. So that's the difference between kinetics and kinematics. We do kinematics. So Sportsbox creates kinematic trackers for each swing. And we've kind of come up with the term trackers because we think that they track your motion. Uh, we used to call them parameters or values or measurements, but we've latched onto the term trackers. So trackers are kinematic measurements from the whole swing. Every time a video image is captured, um, a tracker can be calculated. So you can have trackers for every equivalent video frame when you scroll through the avatar or you scroll through the video. Um, and they can be tracked simultaneously with the robot in our application. Each tracker, we haven't done it yet, but each tracker could be graphed for the whole swing, as you can see in that image just below there. So you'd have a tracker on the y-axis, and you'd have time in seconds on the x-axis, and you'd have a curve that actually shows your motion. I like to think of this, rather than thinking of it as a graph, I like to think of it as a signature of motion. So you could have a tracker graph or um, chest turn or pelvis sway, you can have a tracker graph for each one of them. It gives us a signature of the motion and it's different for each swing you take. Yet surprisingly, it's very similar for each person. It's almost like, well, I keep saying a signature. It's literally your signature in your golf swing and it has distinct characters with key actions. Now, we, track, as I said, the entire swing. And we can give you a graph of the entire swing, but it's really convenient to give you specific values for key points or key positions in the, in the swing. And so we calculate, like, what's your maximum um, chest turn at the top of your backswing? Or what's your pelvis sway at impact? 
So the ones that we look at are in fact address, backswing club horizontal, top of backswing, downswing club horizontal, impact, follow through club horizontal, and finish. So those are seven key points. We quite often abbreviate it just to simply address top impact and finish, but we do have that other information available. So the cool thing about capturing those distinct um, values and calculating those values at those key positions is we can create a database from all of our trackers. So we can put into a database many, many, many swings. And from those swings, we can look at averages, means and standard deviations. We can calculate ranges. We can do the statistics that I'm gonna talk about in a couple of slides from now that tell us what 100% of the golfers do, what 90% of the golfers do. So we can get some really good information. We can do correlations between club head speed and body parameters. We can do uh, comparisons between different groups of golfers. So having these trackers, and having these tracker values at specific instances in the swing gives us the power to do that. So we've, we've built um, a couple of databases from uh, AMM data uh, in the past, 103 uh, PGA Tour drivers, 224 LPA Tour drivers. Now, obviously we've not got as many women as we have men. And so we need to uh, build up our database with the women's side of it, of course. Um, I'm sure Jihei and Stephanie really agree with that, um, that we need to put more emphasis on what the women are doing as well as what the men are doing. But anyway, above and beyond that, you could even potentially create a database of your own golf swings where you keep every single swing when they're just beginning with you. And then after their 10 weeks or their 12 weeks or whatever the course is, you can show them the difference in when they started and when they finished and literally quantitatively how they've improved. So in this- so uh, One quick table. question from Tom, um, how is the backswing, top of backswing defined in our system? The top of backswing is when the club turns around from the backswing to the downswing. The, the key positions that I showed you are all based upon what the club is doing because different parts of the body change into the downswing from the backswing at different times. But really, it's all about when the club changes direction from going backwards to going forwards. So uh, talking about that uh, table there, you can see that the one 100 degrees is, is outlined. Let me just see if I can get the laser pointed here. OK, so this one right here, you can see 100 degrees, and it's in red. So what that means in this case is it's outside of the range. And the range is plus or minus one standard deviation which means approximately that person is different to eight out of 10 golfers uh, in the database. Maybe good, maybe bad, maybe it's club head speed. If it's club head speed, then it's good because they're faster. Um, so this gives us an idea. We're, we're not trying to teach to the mean. That would be bad because everybody's different, but we are trying to get an idea of what's typical. And it even it's, it's even more powerful uh, in the next few slides when I show you how we can find out what 100% of the top pros do or what 90%. So if 100% are doing it, then hey, there's definitely something uh, interesting about it. So we call them swing truths and we found them from the pro databases. So we've got 100% truths. Every single pro golfer in our database does this particular action. Then we've got greater than 90% truths so, okay, not every single one of them does it, but yeah, nine out of 10. So if I have databases of 100 people, there might be five or six that don't do it, but the other 93 or 94 do do that particular motion. So again, it deserves to be looked at and it's nice to know uh, in terms of how you teach. So the examples I'm gonna talk about today are 200% truths and the 200, oh, I'm sorry, 300% truths. Yeah, um, I've got some 90% truths that I'm going to talk about in the next um, in the next seminar. So at the top of backswing, the chest and the pelvis are already moving towards the target. What that means is they reach their maximum before the top of backswing and they start sliding towards the target 
before the top of backswing. Another one is at impact, the chest is moving away from the target, so it's kind of backing up. And the 90% truth, which uh, is kind of interesting too, the pelvis is more open at impact than the chest. We found 95% um, of the golfers do that. So the pelvis turn is larger than the chest turn at impact. But I'm going to talk about the first three today. So the first two are pelvis and chest sway toward the target before the top of backswing. And 100% of the tour pros in our database for the driver do in fact do that. So the cool thing is you can look at that on your app. And this is how you would do it on your app. Firstly, you click um, on the top. Well, firstly, you've got to get your avatar up and you've got to get the trackers up as well. So the top of the screen's got the avatar, bottom of the screen's got your trackers. So then you click on the top of backswing yeah. button. We got questions, somebody, or are we okay? All right, so you click on the top and you look at the number at the top of your backswing. So let me get the laser pointer again. At the top of the backswing, we see the pelvis sway is um, minus two inches, sorry, 0 0.2, and minus 1.9 inches for the chest sway. The minus just simply means it's, it's away from the target from the position that they were at address. At address, that's called zero. So if it's negative, that is sway away. If it's positive, that's sway towards. Okay, so these guys are behind the position they were at address. Now then you click the button, or actually you grab the little purple scroll bar and you move it to the left a bit, and you watch the number right here, and you'll see that number will grow, will get bigger in a negative direction. Okay, so it, it's, it's getting further and further away, if you like, from where you were at address. So that shows us now that the maximum amount of sway was before the top of backswing. So now you can, once you're at this maximum point of sway, you can slide the purple bar to the right again until you get to the top of backswing. And you can watch these numbers get closer and closer to zero and eventually past zero and get larger than zero. That means they've passed the point of address. So like I said, the negative sign really means that you're just before you were um, at the point of address on the screen, you'd be to the left of it. In real life, you'd be further away from, from the target. So why is this important and what does it mean? Well, the Tor Pro transition sequence is typically sway before turn. So Tor Pros typically will sway towards the target before they'll start to turn with the pelvis and the rib cage and the arm and the club. Um, so it, it's a very standard Tour Pro type move or type action. And the action actually does help the downswing loading of the club. It helps with weight transfer over onto your lead leg, of course, and it potentially can increase club head speed because it helps in the release of the club. So it is an important action. And the cool thing is you can measure it and you can see it using our app. Okay, so let's go one more. Chest sways away from the target as impact is approached. This may be initially counterintuitive to you. You think that you're going to completely sway all the way over onto your lead leg and everything's gonna be swaying towards the target all the way through the downswing. Well, that's not the case with the chest. The case with the pelvis, but not with the chest. The chest sways towards the target and then just before impact, as the club is released, it sways back away from the target. And so the way you can see this, and by the way, that happens in 100% of the tour pros in our database with the driver. Now, not necessarily with the shorter clubs, but definitely with the driver. So how would you see it in the app? Again, you'll click on to make sure that you've got the avatar and trackers visible. And then you will click on the third button from the left, um, that one there, which is the top of backswing. In this case, right there. And that will take your avatar and your tracker values directly. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm still on the previous slide. We're talking about impact now. So you would click it directly on impact, okay? Which is the button down here. So you've got your avatar now at impact and you're looking at the values on the screen for chest sway. 
We're not talking about pelvis sway, it just so happens that's on the screen as well. So you can see at impact, the chest sway is 0.6 inches. Now it's positive. So that means your chest has already passed where you were at address. Typically in the downswing, the chest and pelvis is gonna go past. The chest goes past where you were at address and then it comes back again. So how do we see that? Well, now we scroll our bar, uh, a little purple bar a little bit early in the swing and we see that that number actually increases. Now in this, in this case, that might be a little bit confusing but it's, it's a larger number before impact. So that means they're actually um, further away from where they were at impact, and then they're gonna move backwards at, towards where they were at impact, which is right here. So you can see a larger number getting smaller in this case, meaning they're swaying away from the target. Now, why does this happen? Just for clarification, positive, sway number means they're closer to the target, correct? Yeah, past where they were at address. Okay, so they were closer to the target before impact than they are at impact. Yeah, and so they move backwards. They move from being uh, closer to the target to being further away from the target. And that they did in fact move by about seven tenths of an inch. So why is this important and why does it happen? Well, in the impact zone, the club is moving very, very fast especially with a driver. So the force of the club on the hands is very large and it's pulling the golfer to the left or towards the target uh, and forward towards the direction where the ball is. So if you were not swaying backwards with your, your chest, there's a good chance you'd get off balance. So the golfer reacts by leaning backward away and backward and away with the upper body. So if this, action is done actively and correctly timed, it can also help the release of the club and the club can release faster and club head speed can be faster. So this is another 100% truth. Every single one of the top pros in our database does that. And Phil, so, sometimes you see the chest sway number going negative at impact, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that just means, again, um, if we can get into this in more detail in another um, webinar, because now you can look at the whole graph, the whole, the whole signature of chest sway. So chest sway will sway towards the target and it will sway away from the target. If you're hanging back though, your chest will sway towards the target, but it'll never get back to where you were at address. So it'll always stay negative, but it still will sway back. So some, some golfers who cover the ball are gonna sway way over past the ball and come back. Golfers who hang back won't even get to where they were. So that's another thing and I was gonna talk about that in, a, in another uh, seminar. But basically you can also use these trackers and these key positions to identify key faults or key issues with the swing. And that's one good example that Jihei just brought up. It may always stay negative, which means the golfer's hanging back. So that's uh, all I've got as far as the, the 100 percenters that we're going to talk about today. So I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll hang it, uh, hand it back over to you, G. Hey? Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Phil. Um, and Sean and David, if you guys are ready, I'm going to share my screen so that you guys can get to your portion of the presentation. All right, take it away, David and Sean. Well, good evening, everybody. And it's a pleasure to be here on the, the first uh, uh, webinar. As I said, you know, this is definitely the best one so far, so which is great. <laughs> but um, no, it's, it's a great pleasure to, to be here. And it's, it's very interesting, the, the era that we're moving into. Um, you know, I always say uh, to all our coaches or anytime I give a seminar, you need us much information as possible so you can teach as simply as possible. I think that's something that people, uh, teachers and coaches should keep in mind because yes, all this information is fabulous and it's what we do with it, which is key. Uh, how we help the average golfer. Now, bearing in mind, 
that we're not teaching talk players uh, on every occasion. Okay, we've got a vast range of golfers, high handicappers, different uh, age levels, different uh, physical abilities, and so on and so forth. So, really, I, I think it's more than anything else realizing look, that sports box is a is a tool. It's a fabulous tool. It really. It's a big step up from 2D video, let's face it, being able to see the avatar. And you know, the great thing is that what's coming down the pipeline is whereby you're gonna be able to see what the club, the club head, the hands, the arms are doing, because that's obviously a huge component in a swing. Realizing that for the most part, we have to, as coaches, figure out the cause and effect, okay? Yes, we can see the, we can see the effect. We could we listen to Phil there, and you can see how the chest moves forward and moves backwards. Now, how much it moves backwards, how much it moves forward, can be a result of, of many things. So we have to look at that. And I, I think obviously the greatest use for sports bots is being able to quantify information, being able to look at somebody and say, look, this is, I mean, it's it's much more. I think be able to get the message across whereby you can actually see a measurement. It's not just saying, well, do you see how much better your shoulder turn is here, et cetera, et cetera, which you've done for years, where now you can actually see from the six different angles that you're able to see and view um, the avatar, you know, how much shoulder rotation, how much hip rotation, how much sway there is. I mean, so it's, I think it's uh, phenomenal being able to achieve this uh, as a coach, being able to sort of be able to look at it and say, look, this is where you were, this is where you are. And uh, it remember, it adds to what you do. I think one has to be very careful to say that you don't just simply think sports boxes, okay, we, we're never going to get to a point, hopefully, where you go into a booth and uh, out comes a little tape that says, okay, you're here, you're here, you're there, work on this drill. I mean, you know, remember a lot of teaching, and especially over the years, I've been through the eras of teaching with great teachers, uh, and great players for that matter, who intuition plays an awful big role and intuition in teaching is, is vital. I mean, a lot of times I'll suggest to all our coaches and teachers that they don't even teach with video, never mind sports box, because they say you need to train your eye to be able to instinctively understand what's taking place and the sequence that you make these changes and certainly getting to the root cause of the problem. I mean, you can talk about the effects and bring up 20 effects. Well, they're not gonna be able to think about how to fix those unless you get to the root cause, which normally it could be something that's set up, could be something grip. I mean, you know, a multitude of, of, of um, issues, but we've, I, I think that, you know, the more we get comfortable with it, I mean, this is something for me, I mean, uh, it's like I'm starting to get comfortable with it and see, I mean, I have worked 3D over the years. I mean, there's obviously much as Phil was uh, alluding to the, the kinematic aspect of it is, in effect, I mean, why players hit the ball a long way? Why it's a, it's a buildup of energy and a, a storage of energy and a release of energy. So down the road, the exciting thing is with sports box that we're going to be able to sort of have one-stop shopping where you're going to be able to see not only the movement patterns in the, in the kinetic chain, but also be able to actually see you know, how energy is built up, how it's stored, I say how it's released, uh, being able to observe what the club face is actually doing. Remember so much is, is gear around the club face. I mean, the fact that somebody has an open club face at the top of the backswing, some way they've got to close it. So, you know, you're over the top move, maybe just simply through the fact that somebody has a, a too open a club face. They're figuring out how to square that club face off. So that's the exciting thing. I mean, listen, we're only, we're only at sort of ground zero here and I'm sure Jihei will agree and, uh, and Phil will agree. Listen, we've got a long ways to go, but I mean, I think we're at, we're, we're at a time now where information is key. And as long as we use this information correctly, uh, I think we're all going to be way better off. We're going to be more knowledgeable. It's, there won't be so much as far as opinions are concerned. There'll be much more as far as say, look, this is, this is the data that we have here. And we can see what's actually taking place. You know, you're not, you're not hanging back as much as you think. You know, you may feel that, but that's really post impact so you know there's all sorts of things that this is really going to help as teachers to accomplish and say just make our jobs easier and you know it's a lot of the bells and whistles the fact that uh, you know we we're in a technology age now so being able to analyze be able to assess be able to quantify uh it's huge and so i, I mean it's I, 
looking into a crystal ball to see what's going to be you know, two or three years down the road. I mean, it's going to be really, really exciting. But the fact that the fact that this uh, piece of equipment, if you want to call it that, um, this technology is available in a way that you don't have to have a wearable. Where you don't have to wear you know, all the markers, which sometimes if they move, you're going to get a bad reading. I mean, where you, you can simply take your take your iPhone, film somebody, and then basically, hey, within a minute, you've got you've got an avatar. You've got to be able to be able to quantify. So it's it's huge as far as being able to sort of show improvement, being able to uh, give confidence to people that hey, hey, you're working on the right track. Being able to give somebody a drill, for instance, and see the immediate benefits from that drill. So, say, hey, just uh, so many benefits from sports box. I mean, it's uh, incredible what Jihei and the team have done there. And uh, I'm really excited for the future. I mean, look, I invested in the company because I do think this is the next phase in golf instruction. I mean, we've come as far as we can go in, in 2D. And 2D, we know, is not always, I mean, depending on the angle of the camera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, hey, Sean knows well as I do, you know, hey, if we want to make somebody look better, we can just tweak the angle of the camera. See, look how much better you look there, you see? And so, uh, you know, without telling them, but uh, so it's uh, it's really, the fact is now, hey, we're going to have this, this data in front of us where we can analyze it and really come up with a solution. And that's the whole key, come up with a quick solution for somebody. People, you know, it's interesting in this day and age, right? Uh, we don't have as much time as we used to to play and to practice. People want that information immediately. So we can get something to them uh, quickly and, and explain to them in a way that they understand it. And hey, as, as coaches and teachers, we can keep in touch with our clients and our students much, much easier. People are going to be, hey, they, they send, us, send us a sports box, uh, uh, some sports box information. And hey, hey, yes, you're on the right lines. Look where you are compared to where you were when you were here a month ago. So it's another way of, of connecting with your clients. So that's just a general overview of sports boxes. So I'm very excited to be involved. All our academies are going to be involved. And um, I think that it's, it's going to be part and parcel, I think, of a uh, coaches and teachers uh, toolkit, if you will. Ah, excellent. So we're going to look at some of the truths from the everyday golfer, because as instructors, um, you've, obviously the bread and butter for us is the everyday player, uh, juniors, adults, men, women, all the uh, clients that just want to get better. And for the most part, even at the top level, I'd say whether we're working with our tour players all the way down to beginners, uh, you know, there's obviously a joy in striking the ball more solidly, more consistent, and obviously hitting it further, right? So if we go to the next point here. So I think one of the keys for most students coming for lessons, they're obviously coming in because they want to improve these aspects. Uh, the majority of them are looking for some guidance, some clarity, a plan, if you will. So, if you will, giving them that understanding of, uh, say, the feel that they need to have, uh, explaining, you know, through the sports box AI what's going on with the motion, but doing it in a measurable way, as well as complementing it with a 2D. Um, because most players, with that lack of understanding, both in terms of concept and feel, they never really maximize the ball striking potential and consistency. So I think it's our job as instructors to really deliver a clear, simple explanation of their current action and how we can access, obviously, that consistency and solidness. So what you're trying to say in a nutshell, Sean, is that, that people don't have real intelligence. They have artificial <laughs> intelligence, right? Well, and also, David, I mean, how many people these days are we seeing coming to us that are they've gone through over a hundred YouTube videos. So while as teachers, we love giving great advice, it's important that that advice is geared toward the right player. And oftentimes they go down a rabbit hole and don't really uh, you know, get to the real heart and if you will, the cause of what's causing their frustration, uh, they're really dealing with the effects. So we're gonna demonstrate our show, a simple exercise here, a pivot drill, that we use, we're gonna show you a before and after with a client that was pretty much ticked all the boxes. He was losing confidence with his ball striking, lacking distance, hitting it more offline, had gone from a two to an eight. And so let's, uh, let's bring up some of these images here. So what do we see with these players in general as we look specifically, we'll call it the pivot motion, the body motion, if you will, the engine room to the swing. Uh, we see for the most part, especially as players get a little older, 
Uh, we see a lack of, say, hip and shoulder rotation on the backswing. Uh, as a result, that you know they don't quite create enough side bend. They lose that connection to the ground. Uh, for instance, a lot of players might carry too much flex, particularly in the trail leg, so they get a little bit quadsy. So they're never really able to wind up, and as a result, they have to use the magic erasers, hands and arms, right? You know, trying to go out at excessive speed, they get offline. So those are probably some things as instructors we see there a lot. So here's a player, as I say, got down as low as a two, heading in the wrong direction. Uh, with his energy and ball strike. I think I need to interject here. I, this client of ours here, he's infamous because uh, he was uh, a member of the club where Frank Nobolo was a member. Uh, probably some people will know the story, but this fella hit a, a low snap hook as, uh, as Frank was driving up and hit him in the head. And literally, I mean, could have killed him. And so anyway, he was driving to the hospital, and uh, this is a true story. Driving to the hospital, there's blood pouring out everywhere. And he said to uh, he said to Frank, "Listen, why would I? Why do I keep hitting that low pull hook? Is there any reason for this?" <laughs> and so you know, the, the great thing with sports box now, we get him to hit it high right rather than low left. So, so our doctor friend here, infamous. So, and um, what I've really liked with the sports box is. I have a client in front of me, I'm capturing the 2D and I'm getting the 3D pretty much in the same 60 seconds. So you can't beat that, there's no markers. Uh, Dr. Weaver here, really good, really good player to say to get down to a two, but his handicap was heading up to an eight and he said felt more like a 12. Uh, big loss of distance with the driver. So this is his first lesson. You can see the 2D on the left, obviously sports box on the right. The thing that caught my attention you know, when he said he was losing distance, there was the lack of wind up through his pelvis. So obviously the measurable there, 34 degrees of pelvic turn. Um, and the, the side bend with the shoulders was in that gray area. So uh, you could definitely see from down the line with the sports box AIs, we're able to look at those seven different views that he really wasn't maximizing the coil, particularly in his pelvis area. We've got our measurables with TrackMan there on the right. 88, 131 on the ball speed, smash, which was decent. Uh, his geometry into the ball was very good, you know, for that club head speed, three up on it. But again, for somebody that hit the ball regularly over 250 in his better playing days, things had really dropped off there. So that was the initial capture. We'll jump down to the next screen there, Jihei, thank you. So we're going to show you pivot drill after this, but you could see Right away on the left-hand side there, he, we gave him a pivot drill before he left to play at Bandon Dunes with some buddies, came back, was raving about his reclaimed distance. Uh, we can see now the hip turn has jumped up to 44 degrees, the side bend on the shoulders. Basically his connection uh, to the ground had gotten much better there. You can see uh, you know, the, the difference, especially in the right leg there. If you look at the right leg position, we, you know, as instructors in the past, David, we talked about, you know, in the 80s, there was a big move toward keeping that right knee flex. Now you can see that right leg is obviously spiraled and lengthened uh, in conjunction with the right hip opening there. So a bigger differential between shoulders and pelvis. And I did want to put the line, which is really neat with sports box, that line through the knees, because so many players have been taught to keep that right leg flexed. It really restricts the right pelvis from opening up. And as soon as we did a pivot drill and access that right hip motion and got it going back and behind and increased a little bit of the shoulder turn. And I really like the F, the, the really the, the side effect here was that his side bend with his upper body really changed almost mm -hmm. 10 degrees. So his verticals then into the ground, he's able to create better force into the ground. He's then able to, as Dr. Cheatham was alluding to there, he's then able to go up and back through the impact zone. So look at the difference there, 95 miles an hour club head speed. And these were the, these measurables in track men were from the first lesson. So this is just an image after he got back because he was tickled. He just wants to get another checkup. Uh, 141 ball speed up 10 miles an hour, smash stayed the same. Attack angle for the most part, pretty similar, went up one degree, but look at his carry and total yardage there. So. I love the fact that now we have with Sportsbox, I've got a reference for this player, whether it's a tour player 
or an amateur looking to improve. We've kind of got a reference for an ideal where the player's heading in a good direction. And it was as simple as really giving them a pivot drill if we want to go to the next frame. And there's so many ways you can do a pivot drill. I know as teachers, this is one of, one of the ones we like for our clients here. A lot of our juniors at our full-time academy, but the broom handle behind the back of the shoulders is a good one. You can see it, you can feel it. Uh, we like our players to prioritize it in their activation. Um, it really gives you a reference. If a player perhaps was you know, reverse pivoted excessively, they can see that lead shoulder is now maybe slightly more behind it. Uh, you can see the way he's loading into his right heel, right glute, and everything's just more opened up, allows him to access, you know, more ground force when he changes direction. And, and we could see on when we actually got on force plates that he had a lot more weight into that right heel. So you can see he's loading into that right side. And I think, you know, a lot of players, as they get a little older, they get a little stiffer, get a little tighter, you know, things like watching the ball, not not afraid to move off it or sway in any form or shape but basically you know that the stick drill is a you know part of the fitness aspect and uh, the mobility aspect that we're obviously trying to get with players as they get a little older uh, rather than just being sta being stationary so you know huge difference there so this is the sort of thing that you know, a player could do quite easily I mean because essentially what we're looking at right now, as far as sports box is concerned, is, is essentially focusing on the pivot motion. Well, we know, let's say, the other component of what the club is doing. So, you know, it's always a case, I think, of figuring out, hey, does the club movement cause a poor body movement? Does the poor body movement cause a poor club movement? That's what, something we have to really ascertain. Uh, but, you know, it's simply you can actually develop a really good looking pivot motion. And I'm sure, you know, as in, in the movement through, you would see be moving forward and then moving backwards, particularly with the driver where you're trying to hit up on the ball. Now, the iron swing's a little bit different, certainly, and going to be a little bit more centered. But the fact of the matter is, say, creating this motion here, uh, a slightly wider stance, obviously, when you would have a driver in your hand, really creates the right feel. And uh, so, you know, the, the image is quite similar to what, uh, what Sportsbox is producing there with, with the stick behind its back. Well, I think also, David, most players, if they actually saw what the chirp players are doing, going into the fitness trailer, going into the gym when they're at the home course and actually doing some activation, uh, getting the rotation styled in, getting the ground force feel. And so a simple drill like this, you know, is something we like to use at our academy if they're not using some other bands and what have you. Uh, this is definitely a cornerstone drill. And if you look at swings that have lasted the test of time. You look at like a Nicholas, look at how much he opened up through his pelvis and shoulders. Uh, it just speaks. Tom Watson. Watson. Hi, hello. When you can go back through the errors and see the players that you lost, who lasted a long time, really had that mobility aspect. Uh, you know, if you lose that mobility, the swing gets shorter, swing gets tighter, hands and arms get more active in order to propel the ball. So really important to keep this keep this motion going as one gets older. Right, and then say, when your player does hit that sweet spot, you've got it on sports box, you've got your measurables, and generally they gravitate back to their old DNA. So if they do, it's not a case of maybe giving them, you know, three or four different lessons. It may be just a case of reiterating yeah. a key point or saying it in a different way or modifying the drill. So that way, you know, you stay on track, the theme the same, the theme's the same, the message's the same, there's good clarity to it. Um, and as you say, the measurables are and, there. And you're giving a player the parameters where, I mean, I think you're going to see a lot of your clients are going to be signing up sports box because literally it's take, they take one swing. Well, let's see, okay, what is my hip? What is my pelvis rotation? What is my shoulder rotation? Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm right on track. So once again, it boosts confidence. It gives it gives gives a coach the ability to maintain that uh, connection with this player. And, uh, you know, it's all about, as we know, golf's all about repeatability and uh, being consistent in that, in that repeatability. So getting somebody to wind up and load up and making sure they're within one or two degrees is probably going to keep their golf game in good shape. Yep. Excellent. Thank you, guys. I always tell myself more than anyone else my, my swing is perfectly capable of producing good shots it's just a matter of being able to remember what produced the good shots and uh, what we we're hearing from our coaches is that when you have 
sports box numbers that are associated with your good swings that produce good shots, then you can always have a baseline to go back to. So, um, all right. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, David and Sean. Um, hopefully that was really helpful and informative. It was for me. So let's, um, let's go through some questions that we've been getting along the way for the last um, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll go to Parker's. Um, how do you draw a circle before and after on the app after showing a student their 3D swing? So that's a feature we don't have yet. Um, so we will mark that in our, in our uh, feature request list and, uh, and uh, figure that out. Sounds like a valuable feature. Um, how accurate is it? So we are extremely accurate. I'm sure you guys are more curious about the angular numbers, so turn bend, side bend of the pelvis and the chest, which are the things that we're measuring angularly. Uh, those are very accurate. And our standard kind of gold standard is the AMM system, which is um, you know, arguably the most accurate 3D motion capture system out there for golf. Um, and uh, if you look at chest and pelvis turn bend, side bend numbers throughout the swing, the average error rate is between three to four degrees. Um, and our chest numbers are much, much tighter to the AMM numbers. And the, the pelvis numbers are catching up. But overall, if you average, average everything out, it's between uh, three to four degrees. So it's very tight. And because we are an AI company, it keeps on getting better. And uh, in two weeks from now, four weeks from now, two months from now, those, those numbers are only going to get better. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Um, but in terms of functional accuracy, which Phil presented about at the uh, golf.com top 100 summit, all of our numbers uh, reflect the kind of the, the motion of the different body segments, um, the way that they're moving very accurately it portrays the way that the body, body parts are moving. Um, so hopefully also that's, that's uh, helpful for you guys. And um, is there any relationship between a more positive angle of attack and the amount of chest sway at impact? Uh, that's out of my, <laughs> my depth. <laughs> David, Sean, Phil, do you guys want to take that one? Well, one of the things I can answer there, Jihei, is right now we don't know. But the cool thing is because we have the database, we can potentially now look at those two parameters and compare them to one another and find out if there is, in fact, a relationship if there is in fact a correlation between those. And that's the research that we're working on presently. And that's where we got our 100%ers from by doing exactly that type of research. I assume there probably is, but I would think it has a lot more to do with the type of club you're using and swing speed than it is with angle of attack. But that's certainly something that we can look at into the future. Yeah, and that's where things get really exciting, being able to look at correlations like that um, between, you know, delivery of the club and the body motion, the, the flight of the ball um, and the ball related statistics versus what the body's doing. So seeing where things are correlated, I think that will also be very, very educational. And prior to having a system like ours, uh, it's been very difficult to gather that those sets of data. So. Uh, good question. Can an iPhone video sent through email be edited and dropped into Sportsbox? Yes, it can. Email or text, any video that's been taken from face on and slow motion, as long as it meets those two criteria, um, and all of the body is shown throughout the entire swing. If, if it's if it's a good video, you should be able to process it on your on your uh, Sportsbox app. Are there Thank optimal? You. Oh, good. Okay, if I might interrupt, so. Just in, in line with that question, I've had some players that have sent in video at various tournaments throughout, a couple of juniors. Uh, I've got a player out in Pebble at the moment uh, at uh, the TaylorMade Program. So they sent in some videos and I was actually able to, you know, send them back a response and talk about some of the things that they were feeling versus what was really taking place. So it was really neat to take that slow-mo, send, uh, send it back to them. And, you know, just sort of a peace of mind, really, that, hey, you're on track, things are, you know, the efficiency levels are high, or if I needed to point out a, a point of emphasis that they, they could emphasize. Uh, so, the, so the connection is, again, it's seamless you know, when your players are out of town, 
the connectivity is awesome and it just validates you know the fact that they're able to use their phone send in a slow-mo and you're able to send them back a report so that's pretty neat thanks sean um i i joke that um if i had sports box when i was playing <laughs> may not have quit <laughs> Um, anyhow, next question, are there optimal ranges for different parameters such as pelvis and chest rotation? Um, I wouldn't say optimal, but there are TOR ranges, so TOR mean, so male and female TOR players that have been measured. We have a mean for those numbers and uh, standard deviation, which gives us, gives us a range. Obviously, optimal depends on who you are and what kind of mobility, um, so yeah, that is available, and if you are a Sportsbox member, you may have noticed that on our website, 3dgolf.sportsbox.ai, if you log in, there is a learnings tab um, where we provide those ranges for all of the kinematic trackers that we, we, um, we have available. So go check it out. Um, if you guys can't find it, email us, we'll, we'll send you the link. And it will eventually be integrated into the app so you can see it more clearly. You don't have to you know, yeah. that was a very popular request. Yeah. Otherwise. Um, what is your favorite sports box viewpoint? Okay. Um, Sean, David, do you guys want to take that? I like the overhead view. Personally, I think you see a lot what goes on. Um, visually, I think it's more impressive than anything else. I mean, and they're all good, obviously. And you look at certain things from different angles, but that overhead one is always something that I've, I've, I've enjoyed looking at because you can, you can see uh, much easier to see the movement patterns, and uh, and then when the club comes into uh, comes in uh, becomes involved, we'll be able to see that as well. Yeah, the bird the bird's eye view is is definitely really <coughs> neat. I mean, because you're seeing, you know, a golf, a golf swing's obviously full of circles when you look down from the bird's eye view. The club head on the outside, the hands, the shoulders, but then being able to put the visuals like we showed this evening on the knees, the hips, and then eventually the shoulders, you could really see uh, the separation increase versus the player's original action. So I love that bird's eye view. It's definitely a, a neat feature. Um, Craig wants to know, do you envision a future, ap a future application for putting? Um, that, the answer is yes. Um, we haven't put too much energy into optimizing it for putting motion capture, but certainly something that's been, um, you know, requested over and over and we're just, uh, yeah, we're, we're interested. So if you guys have ideas, please, um, or, you know, examples of other things that you have found valuable, please send them our way. Um, Ronnie, does Sportsbox catch the numbers for rate of stretch or rate of recoil? Uh, Phil, do you want to take that? Um, yeah, uh, at the moment we do not have them, but those are trackers we're working on. So we're looking at like the X factor stretch, for example. We've got X factor, and so we want to look at how much it stretches, and and then the rate of rate of recoil. Those sort of things are again on the request list. Uh, they are within our capability. It's just a matter of getting to them. Yeah, X factor, however, has been included. If you go to the numbers tab. Um, it shows you the, the chest and pelvis turn, and then below that you'll see an X factor number. So it kind of calculates the differential. To yeah, use. just quickly butting in a little bit. If they wanted to see the X factor stretch, they could use the X factor and literally just scroll through and see what it is at top of backswing and what the maximum it is when you go to downswing. And then that stretch value is just the difference between those two. So you can, you can get those numbers now, we're just going to make them much more easy to get to um, as we progress. Okay. Um, next question: Trail knee flexion tracker. The higher the number in degrees, the more extension. Correct, right, Phil? The higher the number, it means it's more straighter, right? Yeah. Think of it as we're just measuring the ankle at the back of the knee. So as you bend your knee, that angle gets smaller, and as you stretch your knee, that angle gets bigger. Physical therapists sometimes measure it from um, the straight line and how much you've deviated from the straight line. We're not doing that. We're measuring it at the back of the knee, basically. Yeah. Uh, Left-handed, it is definitely coming, I promise. In December, left-handed swings will be accommodated. Uh, wrist numbers are also coming. Uh, and we have a whole set of 
trackers that we are going to be releasing in our next version, next big feature release. Um, Sam, I could see sweating over there, but <laughs> we are including the risk numbers in the next version. Idea change of player was captured as a right-handed to left-handed within the, well, we'll Paul, we will get with you on this question separately. I'm just trying to go through them quickly because we have a few minutes left. Uh, Brian Darty, in the app, we have a maximum number of players we can keep track of in our database. Do we have a maximum number of swings per player? Um, we will, no, there is no maximum number of swings per, per player. Oh, okay. um, and then Isaac wants to know, I remember the numbers are based on angled angle to be zero degrees. Yes, that's correct. So uh, on sports box, we don't set an external target line as a zero degree line. It's a zero degree, degree line against which the pelvis and chest turn are calculated or set by the two ankles, a straight line through the two ankles. Um, yep. Hi, jong <laughs> Okay, one more question. Um, uh, pelvis thrust number is not included. Um, can Phil demonstrate how to do that manual scroll through for the X factor? Um, why don't we, Paul, why don't we send you a screen recording of how we do that separately? Um, okay. You guys are awesome uh, and we're even on time. We're gonna wrap this up for today, but um, hopefully this was this was good content for you all. Um, we will send out a survey to get your feedback on this. And uh, again, this is done for you guys, right? This isn't for uh, for us, it's, it's we want this to be as helpful and educational as possible. So um, your feedback on how to improve this, the format, the type of content, you know, the length of the kind of all of this, um, we will, we would love to hear your feedback on it. But um, for tonight, thank you all. Um, have a great night. Have a great morning. I don't know where you guys are, but um, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. If, if we didn't get to your question, email us uh, support at sportsbox.ai and uh, we will do our best to answer those as quickly as possible. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.